Oh, wait. If you're not hearing the audio at this time, please check your computer speaker settings. If you're experiencing technical difficulties, please contact technical support at the address shown on the screen. In the event of technical difficulties during this public hearing, please stay online while we work to resolve the issue. Hello, my name is Sherry Logiman, the project manager for this PDNU study, and I will be moderating this public hearing for the ICANN Project Development and Environment Study from East of State Road 261, Capital Circle Northeast, to West of State Road 59, Gamble Road, in Leon and Jefferson counties. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, or FDOT, I would like to thank you for your interest in this study. Iris Waters, the PDNU project manager, is overseeing the hearing virtually at in, and I'm at the in-person in location at the Tallahassee Automobile Museum in Tallahassee, Florida. We are both being supported by representatives of FDOT District 3 and the consulting team. We would also like to take a moment and thank any elected officials who are in attendance for tonight's public hearing. We appreciate your interest and involvement in this project. We will now turn our attention to the narrated public hearing presentation. Good evening. The Florida Department of Transportation would like to welcome you to the public hearing for the I-10 Project Development and Environment, or PD&E study, Financial Management Project Number 406585-3-22-01. In addition to the PD&E staff here tonight, a representative from the District Right-of-Way Department is here and will be available after the public hearing if you have questions regarding this project. A transcript is being made of all oral proceedings and will be part of the public record for this project. Before we start the presentation, I will share a few details to help you participate in this meeting. On your computer or device screen, you should see an information window that looks like the one in the upper right corner shown here. To listen to the meeting, your computer or device speakers are selected by default. If you prefer to listen by phone, select Telephone in the audio pane of the control panel and dial in using the information displayed. All virtual attendees will be placed in listen-only mode throughout the public hearing. At a later date, we will provide responses to written comments that were submitted during online registration and those submitted at the in-person venue. The comment period begins as soon as the presentation has ended. Verbal comments from the in-person meeting will be addressed first. Verbal comment requests submitted during online registration will be addressed second. Providing verbal comments using GoToWebinar is simple. First, you must request to speak when registering to attend. During the comment period, the organizer will call your name that you provided at registration and unmute you. If the microphone icon is green, you are ready to make your comment. If the microphone icon is orange, you will need to click the microphone icon once, and it will notify you that you are unmuted. Then you can provide your comment. Again, you will not be on camera at any time if you join online. During the public comment period after the formal presentation, in-person participants will be called upon to speak first, followed by the virtual online speakers who wish to speak. A recording of the webinar will be available at the project website three days after the hearing. You can also call the project manager after the public hearing to request additional project information. Prior to the public hearing, draft engineering and environmental documents were made available for public review at the east side branch of the Leroy Collins Leon County Public Library since May 27, 2021 and will continue to be available through July 6, 2021 at this location. The location does require social distancing. While masks are not required, they are strongly encouraged. The library is located at 1583 Pendrick Road, Tallahassee. The documents are also available on the project website. 
You may also view project documents tonight at the in-person public hearing. The purpose of this public hearing is to share information with the general public about the proposed improvement, its conceptual design, all alternatives under study, and the potential beneficial and adverse social, economic, and environmental impacts upon the community. The public hearing also serves as an official forum providing an opportunity for members of the public to express their opinions regarding the project. There are three primary components to tonight's hearing. First, the open house, which occurred prior to this presentation, where you were invited to view the project displays and to speak directly with the project team and provide your comments in writing through the online geoform or to the court reporter. Second, this presentation, which will explain the project purpose and need, study alternatives, potential impacts, both beneficial and adverse, and proposed methods to mitigate adverse project impacts. And third, a formal comment period following this presentation where you will have the opportunity to provide oral statements. For those at the in-person location, statements may be made at the microphone or you may provide your comments directly to the court reporter or in writing. Virtual online speakers will be called upon after in-person participants. This environmental study, which includes the proposed widening of I-10, to a six-lane divided high-speed rural typical section has been conducted by the Florida Department of Transportation, FDOT, District 3, in compliance with all applicable federal environmental laws and pursuant to 23 United States Code Section 327 and the implementing memorandum of understanding between FDOT and the Federal Highway Administration, signed on December 14, 2016. The FDOT Office of Environmental Management in Tallahassee is the approving authority. This public hearing was advertised consistent with the federal and state requirements shown on the slide and is being held to provide you with the opportunity to comment on this project. Public participation at this hearing is encouraged and solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting either the Florida Department of Transportation District 3 office or the Tallahassee office of the Florida Department of Transportation. This contact information is also provided in the project handout. FDOT is conducting a Project Development and Environment or PD&E study for this project. The PD&E process is used to evaluate potential impacts to determine an alternative, utilizing a continuous community outreach process to ensure that all interested parties have meaningful participation in the process. Public input and information received at the hearing will be taken into consideration when preparing the final documents for this study. The study limits extend from east of State Road 261, Capital Circle Northeast, to west of State Road 59, Gamble Road, in Leon and Jefferson Counties. The project is approximately 13 miles. The purpose of this project is to address capacity and safety issues on I-10 between State Road 261 and State Road 59, as well as increase regional mobility and provide system linkage necessary for efficient intra- and interstate movement of people and goods critical for Florida's economic development. This project is intended to address existing and future congestion and delay on I-10 with the goal of making the I-10 corridor operate safer and more efficiently through Leon and Jefferson counties. Additionally, I-10 is a designated hurricane evacuation route and is a critical evacuation corridor for Florida. Efficient emergency evacuation capacity is needed for all of Florida citizens, including those evacuating the Florida Peninsula to North Florida and adjacent states. A build alternative and a no-build alternative were evaluated. The no-build alternative assumes no improvements and does not meet the purpose and need for the project. However, it does provide a baseline condition against which to compare and measure the effects of the build alternative. The build alternative includes widening the existing corridor as well as examining any interchange improvements that were needed. In an effort to increase safety and capacity, FDOT is proposing the following changes. Widen I-10 from four to six lanes, replace the existing bridges, provide improvements to the I-10 US-90 Mayhan Drive interchange area and provide noise abatement where needed along the corridor.
Stormwater treatment locations will be finalized when the project advances to the design phase. Now, we will go through each of these proposed improvements. The first component of the project is widening I-10 from four to six lanes. I-10 within the study area is currently a four-lane divided highway with two 12-foot travel lanes in each direction separated by a 64-foot median. Widening to the inside would construct 12-foot lanes to the inside of the existing roadway in both directions. The median width would be reduced to 40 feet. The reduced median width would require a median barrier, such as a cable barrier, guardrail, or concrete barrier. Inside widening would have the least amount of environmental, physical, and social impacts. It is also consistent with previous I-10 widening projects throughout FDOT District 3. The second component of the project is replacing the existing bridges along I-10. There are four bridges to be replaced within the project limits, two bridges over Miccosukee Road, and two bridges that are a part of the I-10 US-90 Mayhan Drive interchange. The preferred bridge typical will consist of six 12-foot travel lanes with 12-foot inside shoulders and 10-foot outside shoulders. The third component of the project is providing improvements to the I-10 US-90 Mayhan Drive interchange area. Utilizing in-depth analysis to model traffic conditions to the year 2045 and examine safety conditions, enhancements to the existing interchange were determined to improve traffic operations compared to the widening of I-10 without any other improvements to the interchange area. The improvements to the interchange include signalizing each of the study intersections, which consist of the ramp terminal intersections, the US-90 and Walden Road intersection, and the US-90 and Apex Drive intersection, adding a second westbound left lane at the I-10 westbound ramp terminal intersection, adding eastbound and westbound right turn lanes at the Walden Road intersection, Restriping northbound and southbound approaches to provide one exclusive left turn lane and one shared through right lane at the Walden Road and US-90 intersection. Adding a second eastbound through lane at the Apex Drive intersection that would continue through the Summit Lake Drive intersection, then would merge down to one lane before Plantation Forest Drive. All study intersections will operate at a level of service C or better in future year 2045 design conditions. In the future year 2045 no-build conditions, these intersections would operate at a level of service E or F, with the exception of the westbound ramp intersection, which would operate at a level of service C. The fourth component of the project is to provide noise abatement in the form of noise walls. Noise wall locations must meet specific FDOT and federal criteria. Seven noise walls are currently identified. Noise wall 1 is located near Eastgate Community and is approximately 1,760 feet in length and at a height of 14 feet. Noise wall 2 is located along Stonegate Community and is approximately 2,490 feet in length and 8 feet high. Noise Wall 3 is near the Centerville Trace community and is approximately 1,990 feet long and 12 feet high. Noise Wall 4 is along Center Court, running for approximately 1,030 feet and at a height of 14 feet. Noise Wall 16 is along Arbor Hill community and a portion of A.J. Henry Park and range from 14 to 16 feet high. In addition, the existing noise wall at Eastgate will be extended by about 200 feet. Noise wall 7A is located along a portion of Adiron Woods community and is approximately 1,580 feet in length and 12 feet in height. Noise wall 7B is located along Walden Place community and is approximately 2,020 feet long and 12 feet high. Once the project advances to the design phase, the noise barrier will be reviewed and updated regarding locations and sizes. Additional public involvement will occur at that time. An important element of any PD&E study is the evaluation of potential project impacts and benefits. A wide range of environmental resources was evaluated, including various social, cultural, natural, and physical features. Engineering and traffic factors were also considered. This project will not cause any relocation of families or businesses. 
all right-of-way acquisition will be conducted in accordance with Florida Statute 339.09 and the Federal Uniform Relocation Assistance and Real Property Acquisition Policies Act of 1970, commonly known as the Uniform Act. The right-of-way specialist who is supervising this program is here tonight and will be happy to answer your questions. This slide illustrates the impacts for the preferred alternative. The social impacts resulted in 14 parcel impacts, no relocations. The cultural impacts resulted in no archaeological site, no historic properties, one parks and recreational lands. This will be discussed in further detail in a moment. Natural impacts resulted in 0.15 acres of wetland impacts, 0.60 acres feet of floodplains, no impacts to essential fish habitat, four federally protected species, and 39 state protected species. Physical impacts resulted in seven noise sensitive sites recommended for further evaluation in the project's final design phase, two sites of potential contamination, both of which are low risk, eight utilities. These impacts were evaluated to determine the recommended alternative as well as right of way and construction costs. The total estimated construction cost of the preferred alternative is $132.2 million. A comparison of the impacts from the build alternative is provided in the environmental document prepared for the project. As part of the project development process and in accordance with Section 4F of the Department of Transportation Act of 1966, the FDOT is seeking comments from the public concerning the potential effects on the activities, features, and attributes of the Miccosukee Canopy Road Greenway Trail due to minor and temporary impacts to the trail. The FDOT intends to make a de minimis impact determination on this resource. The Miccosukee Canopy Road Greenway is located along the north side of the Miccosukee Road right-of-way and crosses the I-10 right-of-way approximately one mile west of the I-10 Mayhan Drive interchange. The greenway consists of 503 acres of open pasture and forested wetlands with 17 miles of trail for public non-motorized use. I-10 spans the Miccosukee Canopy Road Greenway via twin bridges, which are recommended to be replaced. Due to minor and temporary impacts to the Greenway as a result of the overhead bridge replacement, a temporary relocation of the Greenway Trail will be necessary during construction. This graphic shows how the trail will be used during this time. Thank you. That concludes the formal presentation. We will now begin the public comment period of the public hearing. The next step is to incorporate your input on this public hearing into our decision-making process. After the comment period closes and your input has been considered, a decision will be made and the final PD&E document will be sent to the FDOT Office of Environmental Management for location and design concept acceptance. Please note that we will not be responding to your comments and questions today, but we will respond in writing at a later date. Anyone desiring to make a statement will now have an opportunity to do so. There are multiple ways you may provide your comments written, or verbally, or online. We will now call upon the in-person participants who have requested to speak. As I call your name, please step up to the microphone and state your name and address. If you represent an organization, municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. We ask that you limit your comment to three minutes. And with that, our speaker number one is Mr. Jacobson. Right there. Hello, I'm David Jacobson. I'm president of the Stonegate Homeowners Association, and I live at 3019 Wendy Hill Lane. And my spouse and I have lived there for 33 years. And we want to thank Sherry for all the work that she has done to uh, expedite the noise abatement barriers. However, as we have always advocated noise abatement barriers need to 
go from the Olson Road overpass all the way to the Centerville Road overpass. And in looking at the noise abatement uh, proposals, we don't see that. So it would be our uh, position to have noise abatement barriers go from Olson Road overpass all the way to the Centerville overpass. And then I want to call to everyone's attention that uh, Wilani development is going to result in an I-10 exchange um, at the Wilani Boulevard that uh, right now, we know that there's going to be a major, major, major increase in traffic getting to the Mango project, the uh, Amazon Fulfillment Center. So we would ask that this uh, noise abatement uh, barriers be expedited. And we look uh, to talk with the CRTPA, the Capital Regional Transportation Planning Agency, to help us expedite this program. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Mr. Jacobson. Our second speaker, uh, Terry Ryan. Yes, uh, thank you, Sherry, for everything that you've been doing. My name is Terry Ryan, uh, 2538 Stonegate Drive here in Tallahassee, and I'm co-founder of the Residents of Center Road Group, which represents probably 500 families along Center Road and formed in 2017. I'm here to express continued great concerns we as a group have with the lack of adequate sound barriers behind our houses along State 10. Personally, uh, and this runs from Olson Road, as Dave mentioned, from Olson Road to the I 10 Center Road interchange. The projected, wall, uh, projected walls that we see at Salt tonight back there on the maps looks encouraging, but personally, my home is over a quarter mile away, almost half a mile, and it's very common to hear the loud noise of I 10 at my home in Stonegate Subdivision. This is a Florida Department of Transportation issue, and we've been working to get adequate sound barriers for almost five years, probably even more than that. What is the urgency? A few years ago, the city of Tallahassee thought their wooden fences would help after tearing down thousands of trees and shrubbery. However, that only increased the noise, and these wooden fences are now falling down. Also, these wooden fences provide very good access from I-10 to vapors. Walking from I-10 into our neighborhoods, We've had many comments from residents about this, thus reducing our security tremendously. FDOT has already indicated they can't address this issue, this issue for several years, nor is financing available. I'm sorry, but that's not acceptable. The responsibility of this right of way wall is FDOT's, and adequate stone walls, very similar to other stone walls we found in numerous areas from Pensacola. To Jacksonville need to be built now. This situation has gone on way too long. It certainly affects not only the quality of life we have in each of our subdivisions, but it also affects the security, as I mentioned before, and the values of our home. It's been said that the Capital Regional Transportation Planning Agency allocates funds. The question I have here to end is what can FDOT do to assist us? With securing these funds and build the wall even before construction of widening ITN commences. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment, Mr. Ryan. Our next speaker is uh, Mr. Young. Huh? Young. Uh, my name is Wade Young. I live at uh, 3035 Belgrove Drive. I've lived there for eight years. It was my 
father in law's home unfortunately he passed about a month ago. So my wife and I will be living there. But I'm very familiar with the sound. Being a current drummer, I know all about sound. And sound waves are like water. They will penetrate, go over, go through, uh, infiltrate wherever you may be standing. Um, where I live on um, uh, Belgrove Drive is up on top of the hill. And so I often hear traffic coming from three different directions, coming down below over the Shiloh area, coming uh, as I'm standing on the driveway where the gentleman spoke about uh, no sound barriers. Uh, and often uh, the traffic will wake me up in the middle of the night, I'm quite a distance away. Um, I am getting new windows to help mitigate sound, uh, you know, a wall, a, a wood wall is only good if it's completely uh, cut, cut sound off, having a standard fence is no good. So I agree with the previous gentleman, you know, it'd be helpful if they put the walls up now instead of later. Um, I noticed that it dropped off almost, it was, it was no sign at all during the beginning of the pandemic. And then slowly said, well, the economy started to pick up some here traffic again. And one night I was woke and it must have been a military parade going somewhere. It lasted like 20 minutes and they were moving at two o'clock in the morning. So yes, you hear the sound. So the walls I've seen back there on that plan, I would say it's a good start, but it's inadequate. They really should cover everything. Um, it's just not fair to all the people that live within this city. Uh, we understand we need the, the roadway built, but the sound mitigation is important for our own sanity. And so I just ask that uh, the engineers and that consider that when they're uh, building this highway. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Mr. Young. Our next speaker, Mr. Watson. I'm John Watson. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I really appreciate Sherry and her patience with my numerous emails. I really do. It's really nice work with all the folks with DOT. But there's a lot of things to consider. I am all for sitting on the bank. However, there are things to consider. The walls they're wanting to construct don't absorb sound. They just deflect sound. The sound goes everywhere. There are other strategies that can be done also to alleviate sound. There's studies going on right now about the type of pavement that's put down that can lower the impact of sound of tires. You know, you have the sound of tires, you have the sound of radio, you have the sound of emissions. So there's a lot of different ways that sound can be done besides constructing walls. And the other big thing that you have to think about is, you could be like me. I live in Eastgate subdivision. They built the wall next to my house and it's actually now louder my house because of where my house is located. It, it has been shown that it is louder. And what's most discouraging about all this is even though they know it is now louder in my house than it was before constructing the wall, they have never approached me and I have been banging and banging to come and resolve this issue. So if you're in an unfortunate situation, they build some walls and it gets louder, they cannot do nothing to help you out. It's just something to think about. Now, I, I'm like everybody else. Any kind of abatement uh, issues they do should be done prior to construction and things like that. Other things you need to think about is offensive lighting. And there's a whole a bunch of other things. The other concern is uh, planting grass. Are you pulling down trees to plant grass? Is there a possibility of planting wildflowers instead of grass? I mean, there's a lot of things, pollinators and things like that would benefit a lot more from wildflowers than grass. I guess that's about all my time. So I appreciate DOT and all their efforts, but I just really would like to see some real effort going into sound because all they're dealing with now is walls and there's a lot of different other solutions than just walls. And they're, they're, they're restricted because of existing DOT rules and laws, I get. But there are a lot of other alternatives that could be considered. So thank you. Thank you for your comment, Mr. Watson. Our next speaker is Mr. Gusecki. I'm hoping that I'm pronouncing that correctly. Thank 
you. It's uh, 10 piece ago, 6470 on Water Court. Uh, I live in our Arbor Branch subdivision, which literally is right there. Um, I want to thank the DOT staff. They've been very helpful during the open house answering questions. I've learned a lot this evening. Um, probably didn't do the homework I needed to do before this meeting, but I will tell you, um, 19 years ago, I purchased a home on the interstate. I understood at that time what that meant because the east side of town has been designed and we all live on the east side of town and chose to live here for a reason because it was primarily residential. Um, the plan as it stands, I don't have a problem with. I don't currently, it doesn't show that a wall is being built. I appreciate Mr. Watson's comments. Um, that's very interesting. But the landscape is changing here. And somebody mentioned Project Mango, Amazon, whatever you want to call it. That is going to be a huge impact to this part of the community and it won't stop there. What I'm concerned about at this point is the projections that were used based on 30 years of data, is what I was told. Um, that doesn't account for the variables. It doesn't account for what we're going to see on this side of town in terms of really truck traffic once this facility is built in the next couple of years. Um, your project will take any number of years to complete. This facility will be up and operating on this very property well before then. And we're going to feel the impact of that almost immediately. Um, I think in your design phase, that needs to be considered. Someone needs to look at that down the road to see what the actual impact is. If they're getting a wall here at Walden Road and we're not getting one at Arbor Branch, we'll never get one because the sound, it's already exceeded the threshold. So it's not a sound problem for us. It's a density problem. Because we don't have enough people where we are, we will never get a wall, no matter how much the traffic increases. I think that's important for everyone here to recognize. That won't change for any of us ever, based on how the property was currently designed, which is why we live here. So I respectfully ask that the FDOT, as you get into your design phase, you consider that and look at how the landscape specifically here is going to change, because it's gonna skew those projections. I get looking at 30 years of data, but when you look at another 100 to 150, Semi trucks every day, and the additional traffic that are going to come right here at this interchange. I don't know that that's adequately been accounted for. So uh, I just ask that that be considered as you move forward. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next speaker is uh, Ms. Davis. Catherine Davis and I live in the uh, Hickory Ridge neighborhood and I live on Pine Ridge Road, 2850 Pine Ridge Road. Um, I am asking uh, for a no noise abatement wall. I saw that there is one that's going to be um, next to my house and my property, um, but I know that it's only going to be, well, they said they think only eight feet tall. And I already know that that's not going to be high enough because we're at the top of the hill and the sound comes right over everything right now. <laughs> and I'm sure that's not going to work for us. Um, I'm living in my forever home. I will not move. <laughs> I love Tallahassee. And um, Right now, it's really hard for us to hear when we're outside. We're having friends over and we want to sit out on the back, back deck um, and be out there. It's hard for us to, to talk to our friends and family because the fact that it's so loud. And um, that's mostly because of the fact that they took a lot of trees down right next to my house on the other side of the, of the fence. Um, because of, they put up the um, electric lines up there. And so they've taken a lot of our trees down. We had huge oaks. We had a lot of um, bush in the bushes and things. And it really did help to keep the uh, sound from getting to us. We, we always heard it a little bit. And we always heard it. It was bearable. Now it's not, it's not bearable now. Um, and I'm, I'm worried about with adding an extra lane that there will be more trucks, um, more loud noises. And we hear trucks when they come up the hill to the top and they're using, I don't know what, some somehow the noise is a lot louder 
we hear when they break coming down, going down the other side. I mean, it's really bad. And it's um, gotten, I don't want to move. <clears throat> I have a, my, I have a wonderful home. I love it. We built it. It's my dream home. So I really would like to see if there's something that we can do to help us out. And not just me, it's my neighbors too. I mean, the percent goes right down the road. Our road um, is perpendicular to the highway and the road, the sound just goes straight down the road. Um, so I know other neighbors, if they're not here, I know that they're at least, they've told me that they hear the noise too. So thank you very much. Thank you for your comment, Ms. Davis. And our next speaker is Ms. Glennon. Thank you. Thank you for letting us have the opportunity to speak. My name is Patricia Glennon, and I am the president of the Centerville Trace Homeowners Association. We've been affected by the I-10 traffic uh, ever since I-10 was built, and I have actually seen the cars going by I-10 in the back of our neighborhood. Not only do we hear it, but we see it. We've also seen vagrants coming into the neighborhood because they're, they're walking along I-10 and they can see our homes and they come right in. And they don't know where they are, they don't know where they're going, and it's really scary. One of the other things that concerns me, because we can see the vehicles, and we've heard many accidents, as you know, every day, almost, there's an accident on I-10, is the fact that the debris that's coming from that accident can literally fly into some of our backyards. So I'm hoping 12-foot barriers will be enough. But the sound is a big concern. And, and I know that concrete's not going to absorb anything, but Possibly could they build some vines or install some vines that grow up on the wall to help absorb some of the sound. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Ms. Glennon. Uh, our next speaker is Mr. Kimbrell. I'm hoping that I, I pronounced that correctly. Yeah, I'm Bill Kimberl. Uh, live at 1970 Bushy Hall Road. I actually own property right across I-10. I have about a thousand feet that's adjacent to I-10. I have two major concerns. Number one, let me go on record and say I am all for Project Mango. I'm all for the Northeast Gateway development. I'm also all for the widening of I-10. My main concern is the capacity of the box culvert that is literally at the bottom of, I'm the guy who lives at the bottom of the hill. This box culvert drains an enormous base drainage basin. I'm not so naive, I bought this property 21 years ago. I bought it knowing it was next to I-10. I bought it knowing that it was in a floodplain. But with this Northeast Gateway on one side, Project Mango on the other side, I witnessed it flooding back there many times. It's never gotten in my home. But now is the time to address the capacity of that box hole. Because if they don't run out, it will never get addressed. With the 12,000 some homes that are going to be built to the north, Project Mango to the south, I tend to run right through the middle. Like I said before, I am the guy that lives at the bottom of the hill. It's, um, that's number one concern. We definitely need to address the capacity. Um, number two is the noise abatement, which Everybody seems to be here. The person that doesn't really bother me. I bought the property knowing it's next to I 10, but it does affect my neighbors. Yeah, along with a potential for future flooding, will certainly affect my neighbors. That's it. Now's the time to address them. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is uh, Colleen Diener. Sorry, I'm short. 
I'm Colleen Beener, and I live at 2147 Fallbrook Court in the Center Court Subdivision. I'm also the Secretary Treasurer of the Board of Directors for Center Court. We're located at the southwest corner of the intersection of I-10 and Centerville Road. We have two cul-de-sacs that go right up to I-10, and I actually live four houses down from I-10, so believe me, I get the noise. Um, our development was built in 1998, and I bought my house five years ago, so we all knew it was there. It wasn't a big problem, but there were a lot of trees, and there was a lot of foliage, and it blocked both the noise and the uh, view of the traffic going by our area. Then they decided to place Line 95, and they cut down a lot of the trees, a lot of the foliage, and we started to get bombarded by the noise. Not only could we not stand outside and talk to our neighbors, even inside the house with the windows closed, it blocks out our television, um, depending on how bad the traffic is. And I'm from the north, I like my windows open, so usually November to April, my windows are open. It's not fun to try and sleep with the windows open and you hear this mess outside and the jake breaks going off. So it's very disruptive to everybody in our neighborhood, not just the people who butt up against uh, the interstate. I saw the noise abatement uh, projections and I think it's a wonderful idea. I'm so glad you're addressing that because that fence is a mess. When it was placed there, we were told our HOA was responsible for maintaining it. Um, and we're just small. We don't have a lot of, of homes. We don't have high dues. And we had to spend the dues of two of our 42 homeowners this year just repairing that fence. So we need something else. Um, I've attended enough government meetings over the last few years to know that whatever is proposed doesn't always happen the way that it is originally proposed. And I think that there's an issue with foliage being cut down because it does cover that whole area from Olson Road down to Centerville. So not only the people in the developments where the wall is proposed, but those other people are going to be affected also. And they're absolutely correct. The noise doesn't go away. It comes around the wall. So if you're gonna stop the wall behind the neighbor across the street's house before even the end of her property, that noise is coming right in our cul-de-sac. It's not gonna stop just because there's a wall here. We've already lost our natural sound barrier and we're all for the uh, improvement of I-10. We know it's necessary, especially during hurricanes, but please don't make us be subjected to more noise pollution without some kind of abatement. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you for your comment, Ms. Bina. Our next speaker is Mr. Scarborough. Thank you. Um, I also live in Arbor Branch neighborhood at 1999 Bushy Hall Road, um, and we all talked as neighbors. I'm not going to reiterate a lot of stuff that's already said, but um, you know, there's a few houses that butt up right against I-10. Uh, my house is a couple houses down, but it's still within 500 feet of I-10. Um, I can hear the noise from the road from I-10 at all times of the day. Uh, like. Mr. Kerbel said, doesn't necessarily bother, bother me, but it does bother a lot of people when you get used to it. If we're building, if we're expanding the road because there is gonna be more traffic and with the fulfillment center being built in the future of this area, there is gonna be more traffic. There is gonna be more noise. Um, you know, the wall is considered for Walden, which our houses in our neighborhood are closer to I-10 than those houses are. But because they have more houses in that small little neighborhood than we do, only because our houses are spread out a little bit more, they're considered for you know a noise abatement, but we're not. Um, and that's never going to change. Like he said, for our neighborhood, there's 99 homes in our neighborhood. You can't build anymore. It's never going to change. Um, so I just want to get it on record that something needs to be done, especially for those houses that are within 200 feet and probably even less of I-10 that some type of wall or a wall and trees or something needs to be done to reduce the noise that travels through the neighborhood, especially with the future construction that's coming in this area. Appreciate it. Thank you for your comment, Mr. Scarborough. Next 
speaker is Miss Arnold. I'm in Centerville Trace 3592 Chantilly Court and Charity. Thank you so much. I know you put up with a lot of emails from me and I appreciate your responsiveness to them. Um, I don't have a lot more to add as far as the noise goes. We all know it's noisy. We all know we don't have quiet enjoyment in our neighborhood and we are appreciative of anything that you all do to improve that given the fact that we are going to be seeing a lot more traffic in our area. Another concern that I have, and I feel like it's really valid, is the vagrants that come up off of I-10. And most recently on a Sunday morning, a month or two ago, as I was leaving for church, there was a man who came up between my house and my neighbor's house and asked for a ride to West Tennessee Street, and I'm not going to lie, he scared me to death. And um, lots of young mothers with babies walking through our neighborhood, and that wasn't the first time that that had happened. In fact, it was the second. And that gentleman over there, um, Mr. Hurst, was able to direct the first one that we saw out of the neighborhood. So it is a safety issue, and there are a lot of young families with children and kids on bicycles and I think it's just something that we need to address and we just are appreciative of any, anything and everything that you can do. I also agree that the walls could extend a little bit further and go beyond a neighborhood like for example in our neighborhood we'd love to see it go a little further east than what it is so anything you all do we are very appreciative. Thank you. Thank you for your comment Ms. Arnold. Next speaker is Mr. Land. Uh, my name is Walter Land. I live at 3651 Parker's Ferry Court. That's in the Centerville Trace subdivision. Um, I've already sent a letter uh, regarding this issue, so I won't uh, uh, cover too much ground. Um, I did see the map that shows where the sound abatement wall is supposed to be. Uh, relative to the Centerville Trace neighborhood. Um, as it was mentioned by some other speakers, where when you stop a wall and there, there are other houses that can be affected, uh, it, it's a good idea to ex extend the wall further. Um, I, I think a previous speaker said that uh, having the wall uh, solid from Olson Road all the way to the Centerville Road uh, interchange would be, or the Centerville Road overpass, uh, would be optimal. Um, I, I hope that is is what is adopted. Uh, short of that, I would like to see the uh, the wall extended eastward beyond Centerville Trace, um, where it uh, borders on the Shiloh subdivision. Um, some of those lots have recently been sold. They're going to be cleared soon. That lets in uh, more sound. Uh, the, the bulk of the sound that I get at my house comes from east of where the wall would stop on the current uh, plan. So I would like to see it extended eastward as far as possible. Um, I think that would, would help our neighborhood in general because we also have a lake in our neighborhood. The sound, when it comes off of the interstate, the, the sound just kind of skips right across that water and goes much farther than you would really expect it to. Um, so you don't have to be within visual distance of I-10 to really get a lot of noise off of I-10. So uh, east, east, as far east as you, as you can take the wall would be uh, my request. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Land, for your comments. Our next speaker is Mr. Hurst. John Hurst, I'm at uh, 3694 Corinth Drive, and I'm in Central Trace. I think a couple other folks here said the same thing. Um, you know, I'm just reiterating what they said. The biggest thing is the continuous wall. And like the other gentleman had said, why can't we soften that wall with some Leland cypress or some uh, other type of low growing trees in front of the wall that help deafen that particular uh, sound from coming over or around it? The continuous wall would stop that from happening. But the bigger question I have is this is wall going to go with existing fences? 
or is it actually going to go on the outside of the utility lines that they put up? So I haven't really seen that and identified on any of the properties yet. So those are one of the bigger questions is there where it's going to go. Maybe DOT can come up with no, no Jake break sign between you know, 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. Um, I think I've seen it in other communities, no Jake breaks. I mean, that's that, that's a pretty serious ordeal. My little boy's laying there in bed and comes running there and he thinks it's thunder. It's a laughing, funny time right now, but whenever he's you know a little bit scared, he got to go to school the next day. I can't tell you what I would want to do to him. So um, the other thing is building the wall prior to the work. I mean, I certainly don't want to hear all these machines run all day long up and down the interstate because somebody failed to build a wall prior to starting the construction. I mean, we're, we're in construction. We know how it is. Beep, 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 beep all day long. So, you know, these these are things that I bring in. And one last thing I'd like to go and talk about is I have a pool. I'm 100 foot from the highway. They cut down my trees to put up the utility line. One day, a couple months ago, I think one of our residents said something about a little bad accident. Guess what? We could hear the people screaming in their car until the ambulance got there. And my little boy couldn't figure out why people were screaming. I wouldn't let him go investigate. So whenever you put yourself in these positions and you think about this, what's a 14-foot wall going to do for me? Why not soften this noise with these Leland cypresses or any type of cedar trees that don't grow more than 40 feet tall? You know, these things, you know, I've been there 20 years. I didn't have a problem with the interstate, but it seems that the longer I wait, the bigger the problem becomes. So that's kind of where I sit on the whole thing. And, um, you know, the homeless people are coming around the ends of this fence. They failed to put continuous. And I mean, who's the liability going to fall on? When some homeless guy comes in our neighborhood because somebody didn't build a wall far enough, and some great company like Morgan Morgan says, hey, FDOT failed this. They are in your neighborhood because FDOT stopped the wall 50 yards short. Who's to blame? So those are just things I'd like to bring up. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your comment, Mr. Harris. And our next speaker is Mr. Martin. I hadn't planned to talk, but just after hearing other people talk, I wanted to kind of say thank you for this and uh, just add that everything you've heard. I think I can tell you somebody who lives about a half mile from I 10, but does walk Stonegate. Uh, Pine Ridge, Hickory Ridge, Meadowville Road have been doing so for uh, at least the last five years and have noticed a change as the vegetation was cut down to the power line. So it is noticeably different. Uh, people have mentioned, yeah, they knew I 10 was there when they purchased their home. But yeah, but I 10 was a bit of a different road then. And I think what's coming now between I 10, Mango Project, Development, Northeast Gateway, Wilani, uh, they, that things are changing and I think everything should be done to minimize how much it's going to impact their lives in a way that they really hadn't anticipated. As one person said, she thought it was going to be her forever home and, and really isn't going to move from it. I, I'd like to think that you, you feel a sense of a responsibility for people in their homes, the one place they're supposed to be able to get away from it all as much as possible. To really go out of your way, the lady had mentioned the uh, the wall as a noise barrier. Also, aesthetics, vines and trees to help further abate noise and make it a little more pleasant aesthetically. Granted, trees take a while, but time flies, and I would think you should do everything you can now as soon as possible, so that by the time the construction and the six lanes are there. At least something has come in. And so I would say sooner rather than later. But thank you. For this. Thank you for your comment, Mr. Martin. So does anyone else desire to speak? If so, state your name and address and complete the speaker's part after you've given your statement for the public record. We will now call upon our online participants who requested to speak at registration. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. I live in Hartwood Hills, and we feel kind of like the stepchildren here tonight because we're told that 
we're not even being considered out the east, the east end. And yet we have a subdivision that has over 200 homes right on the interstate, and we're not even being considered. I don't know what else I can say, but I wish you would consider us and would please come out and park your sound things out in my driveway. I'd be more than happy to have you sit in my driveway. And you can hear all the trucks hitting their brakes as they come out there, along with all the speed traps, et cetera, right, right, right out in my house. They seem to do every day. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Does anyone else desire to speak? Okay, we will now call upon our online participants who requested to speak at registration. When you're unmuted by the organizer, please also make sure to unmute your microphone using the GoToWebinar control panel as shown on the slide. Please state your name and address. If you present an organization, municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. Again, we ask that you limit your comment to three minutes. Before you speak, please make sure that you have not self-muted yourself, which you can undo by clicking on the microphone icon on the GoToWebinar control panel. If you did not ask to speak when you registered for the hearing, but you would like to do so, please use the raise your hand feature and we will call on you once to hear from those who previously registered to speak. Now I'm going to turn it over to, Man to Amanda to call on those who would like to comment virtually. Thank you, Sherry. Sherry. We have four people who registered ahead of time. Uh, so I'm gonna call on you guys. Um, some people may be registered not under their own name, so I'm gonna call name even if I don't see you online. And if that's you under a different name, just raise your hand and I'll unmute you. So we're going to start with Lois Griffin. Um, I see two people online as Lois Griffin, but they both say they're offline. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute you just in case. Lois. Griffin. Okay, we will come back to Lois just in case. Uh, next, we're going to go to Brian Walsh. Give me just a second to find Brian. There you are. All right, Brian, you are unmuted. Well, good evening. Thank you. Um, I wanted to, uh, well, I guess I first, uh, Brian Walsh, uh, 10500 uh, Fay Way. Uh, Hartwood Hills uh, Homeowners Association president. Um, uh, I want to echo the comments of the two gentlemen from Stonegate as well as others, in particular the person from the smaller neighborhood. And as was just brought up uh, before going to the virtual speakers, uh, looking at the presentation, our neighborhood doesn't seem to be even in the consideration for sound walls. Uh, when I say a sound wall, I'm talking about uh, the concrete corrugated walls like you see in Jacksonville and other places. Uh, a wooden fence uh, would probably make things worse. Uh, that's why pianos are made out of wood that makes it louder. Um, it's disappointing. I, uh, I don't know exactly what to say uh, other than that. Uh, we, are, uh, we are a neighborhood just like uh, the other neighborhoods. Uh, we are between Chairs Crossroad and Baum Road and are affected by this just as much as everyone else. It's not like uh, a vehicle goes past the other neighborhoods and then becomes quieter as it passes our neighborhood. Um, uh, some ex explanation from DOT uh, would be helpful on that. And I had um, uh, <clears throat> another question uh, about the two proposed, it kind of sounded to me in the presentation 
that widening the interstate to the inside, to the median, is the most likely scenario. But the question, if they go to the outside uh, lanes, would that require uh, taking additional real estate uh, from the property owners uh, would be a question. And one person mentioned a sign that says, you know, no jake brakes or exhaust brakes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and I would would second that motion uh, for everyone along the roadway, uh, particularly where the hills are, um, uh, and like the valley between Chairs Crossroad and Baum Road. But that's all I had to uh, to say and to uh, and to ask. And I just thank you again for uh, time to take the input, and would look forward to hearing from DOT on uh, uh, why neighborhoods were were left off the list of consideration. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Um, DOT will be in touch to answer your questions. Uh, we have your contact information via your email address that you use to register. So someone will be in touch. All right, after Brian, we have Brandy McIntosh. Don't see anyone registered as Brandy McIntosh. Are you on under another name? All right. Next, we have John Beadler. John, I see you. You are unmuted. Yes, I'm John Beadler. Um, I live on Pine Ridge Road, uh, and I just want to uh, further support what Captain Davis said about the eight-foot wall in this area and the stone, what's labeled as the Stonegate section, is, as being insufficient. Just uh, walking down Pine Ridge Road, I can visually see cars over the, the wooden eight foot wall at this point. So a, a eight foot concrete wall wouldn't make much of a difference. Um, I'd also like to comment about the uh, the no Jake break. Um, when the city did the electrical work out there, um, that issue came up and after multiple contacts with the DOT, um, nothing ever happened on that. And I would certainly like to see that as something that could help us all out uh, along the I-10 corridor throughout the uh, Leon County area. Um, as far as these walls go up, another point that came up previously uh, a few years back uh, was the walls that we have and that are, that are current in Tallahassee. Um, when you look at those and you compare them to what you see in, say, Pensacola or what's been going up recently down in the Fort Myers area, they're rather um, be blunt about they're ugly they're just an ugly wall and you've done, the dot has done a better job with walls in other parts of the state of florida and i would hope with it's being the capital that we could do a better job here as well and i think that's about it thank you for the time thank you so much for your comment all right we're going to call on lois again Let's see if she has joined Looks like she's still offline. All right, at this point, is there anyone else online who would like to provide a comment? If so, please raise your hand. All right, Sherry, I don't see anybody. I'm going to turn it back over. Thank you, Mandy. This concludes the public comment period, and I would like to thank everyone for taking the time to share your comments concerning this project. It is now 7.05 and I will hereby officially close the public hearing for the I-10 project development and environment study from east of State Road 261 Capital Center Northeast to west of State Road 59 Gander Road in Leon and Jefferson counties. Thank you for your participation and have a safe evening.